Hello, everybody. Welcome to another great episode of The Rodcast. I'm Monty, and I'm here today with Richard. And today, I want to talk a little bit about engagement. How do I engage people better? A couple of weeks back, we had a uh, pastor's meeting, a pastor's gathering of sorts. And so we were there in the room together and Pastor Rod was sharing. And he was sharing on certain things such as asking better questions, such as getting more engaged in people's lives, seeing where people are at. And that's been something that's been resonating in my heart. And I'd love to hear today from Richard's heart as well. But I do think that there's something powerful as a leader to be able to engage well, to be able to ask questions well, and to not be too afraid uh, of going too far into someone's life. Now, we're not trying to be nosy, but I do think that there is something important for us to be engaging with people. And so I know this is an area that you are passionate for as well, Richard. And so just wondering, uh, just off the bat, what is something about engagement that is exciting for you and in something that you're trying to help others discover maybe something that you discovered yourself? Yeah, I've been actually really reflecting on this idea of engaging people recently because I've realized the times that I've been leading well were the times that usually I was engaging more. And the times Mm. where I didn't feel like I was seeing a lot of fruit or momentum happening, usually those were the times where I was engaging less. And I think maybe maybe it's worth kind of defining what this actually means, like engaging, engagement. Uh, Basically, the way that I'm thinking about this is initiating conversations that have like have a goal. So it's not mm-hmm. it's okay. not just spending time with people, it's investing time with people. Mm. I think uh I think you can just hang out with people and that's great relationally. But I think what right. the best leaders do, and I've seen Pastor Rod just do this just constantly, is when he's with people, he's he's having intentional conversations. So maybe that's a good Mm. kind of summary an intentional conversation that's what i'd call an engagement is that's great having an intentional conversation with a new person at church maybe it's their first day there or maybe it's having an intentional conversation with a high level leader in your church and you want to talk to them about their marriage or some other area of life or their leadership um and so when I talk about engagement or when, as we discuss this, I'm really thinking about it in, t- in terms of from the absolute like non-believer that you're outreaching to, obviously you need to engage them to initiate, like to have a conversation where you can invite someone to church all the way through to, uh, you know, discipleship, engaging them on um, different kind of, gaps in their in their understanding of the bible or god or whatever mm. all the way up to high level leadership and and training pastors um i think the intentional conversations is just such a huge part of what we do and the times that i'm doing it more the more i do that the more fruit i see and so i started getting really excited about you know, teaching this to our leaders here in Hong Kong is, is we need to engage more. We need to have those conversations. And oftentimes where I think there's a few reasons why we don't. Um, One is that Mm. maybe we are shy. Um, That's fair. Uh, I think another one is that we want to respect their space or respect, Mm -hmm. you know, certain aspects of their life. So we don't, yeah you know, come in and be direct there. Um, Or maybe another one is just our own comfort zone. Yeah, Uh, I think that's a big one. one. I think sometimes it feels awkward to address certain things. It could be awkward to go up to a new person, you know, on the street when we're doing outreach, or it could be awkward to talk to a new person at church, or it could be awkward to engage someone about tithing or sexual purity. Yeah. So I think our comfort zone as well is a big factor. And I'm sure there's other things as well that I just can't think of right now. But I think there's a lot of reasons why we don't have those intentional conversations. And uh, I think 
if if we su- to sum it all up, I think the more we engage, the more fruit we see mm. has been my yeah. experience. As long as we're not being nosy, or like like you said, obviously that you can you can go too far with people. Yeah. Um, and we, maybe we can talk a little bit about what that looks like, but I think it's, we get more fruit as we engage more Mm. as a leader. I've certainly seen that in my life. Yeah, absolutely. I would totally agree that. And I think for myself, it's probably more, um, the reasons or seasons why I felt like I haven't been engaging is probably that, uh, sense of like just comfort zone or Mm. another good word probably is complacency it's like Mm. everything's good like you know the relationships are good everything's Mm. nice um and i think it's very easy uh when we when we are part of such you know fun life bringing churches to maybe not want to uh upset the apple cart so to speak to get a bit messy sometimes so i think in my case it's like that I know in Japan, I'm curious to hear about Hong Kong, but Japan, Mm -hmm. I feel in general, people are so respective of each other. They respect each other's privacy. And if you don't feel you have permission to Mm -hmm. step into someone's private realm, it's like an invisible barrier almost, but everyone's aware of it. Every Japanese person is aware of this this zone, this, this threshold that I cannot enter into. But I think it's funny that a lot of Japanese people or anybody for that matter has has questions sometimes in their heads. They, they see something, observe something, notice something, hear something, and they're like, that's a bit off. I feel like I need to address that, Yeah, but I can't. <laughs> you put this really well um, in a recent, I can't remember which one it was, but in a recent teaching you did on this, you, mm. you said it's that moment where they go, hmm? Like, yeah. it's... It's that moment and having lived in Japan, like seeing Japanese do that, like that is a real thing of like, what? Like, (laughs) I don't know what that would look like in English, but like, what? Like that kind of idea of when someone says something and it just like, that doesn't, that doesn't seem good. Um, But you've got all these questions around it and we normally don't say anything because of that you know, respecting their space or our comfort zone or not wanting to upset the yeah. apple cart or anything like that. But that was, that was, re- I thought you summarized it really well. That thought. <laughs> yeah, because it's funny because I thought in the West, we are uh, kind of taught critical thinking, which is not necessarily a big part of Japanese education. Um, right. It's very group think type of education. Just and write the test, learning. do well on the test. Yeah, hundred mm-hmm. percent memorization. Yeah, and so I thought that that was the reason why, uh, at least in our context in Japan, why Japanese people found it difficult to ask questions. I I I wondered if they even had the questions, but I've changed my mind on this actually recently. Is Japanese people are aware and they do have the questions. I just don't think they've been given the permission to ask yeah. those questions and to come across as like nosy. But mm. I think Japanese people are very intuitive. They're very perceptive. Uh, you could even say that they're spiritually aware that they can perceive things, yeah? Right. But then they just they've never practiced asking somebody about that, taking that step into someone else's life. So that thing that you're mentioning, the uh, mm, I see it happen all the time. You see it right. in people's conversations. Someone will be talking and you'll see someone's head just kind of tilt to the side. And so what I'm trying to encourage people, at least Japanese people and anyone for that matter, is when you have that moment, that's kind of the moment to ask a question. That's yeah. the point to engage, to to dare to take a step into someone else's realm and be like, could you just could you just back up one sec? Could you define that for me? Or could you just explain that? Because last time you said this, this time you said this, can you just explain what the difference is? So it's not even like accusatory. It's not pointing fingers. It's Tell me more asking about that. good questions. Uh, yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. So what it's, is it like in, in Hong Kong, in Hong Kong culture? What are the people like in terms of this, 
yeah getting involved uh, I mean, or asking it's, questions it's, I think like definitely there's a difference between Japan because there's such a, there's a, you know, it's a more shy culture. It's a less direct culture. Mm. Um, Hong, you know, Chinese culture is direct. Um, <laughs> so you've got this, but it depends. I, I find here it comes down to personalities. Um, okay. Some people are crazy direct like to the point of rudeness <laughs> and then there's others right. that are you know as as gentle as a japanese person you know i mm. i find it there's a huge there's a much broader spectrum whereas i think with mm. japan it's like culturally taught you should all be this way here sure. it's just like depends on your personality mm. yeah. and so i feel like i've had to coach people at all different levels um mm. like to coach people to pl you've got to be more gentle with this stuff you know um and then there's <laughs> yeah. the opposite where they're just not doing it at all mm. and uh like I, i've recently had a leader who uses the word respect and what he's basically saying is that oh i just respect that person's decision to whatever but mm. what he's really yeah. saying is so the example situation is like literally the person is in sin and it's right. and a leader is not engaging the person on sin and then mm. saying that it's respect which is just it's it's a it's a smoke screen um good person yeah. but i think i know this person well great great person um but they you can just tell he he's not confident to engage mm. it's not but right. it, but it, it, it's hidden behind oh i'm just respecting the person's privacy or their own right to make decisions and i, yeah. I i've been saying to our team that's not leadership that's mm. that's passive um mm. and you've got to lead people um we've got to shepherd them yeah. well we've got to pastor mm. people and if they're in your connect group or if they're in your church and there are glaring problems we we need to speak mm. into it now they could shut you down and i i think the key word you said is permission japanese don't feel they have permission i yeah. think that is a really important concept it's like well actually how do you get permission because because mm. i think that's important that we understand how does permission work because you don't go around giving people permission i don't i don't go up to you monty and say <laughs> hey monty i've decided to give you permission to speak into my life like yeah that that almost never happens where someone will will say that no. um it's pretty awkward uh so yeah. the only way you know whether you have permission is if you test the waters with yeah. someone and yeah. and the thing is they actually it's true you actually can't go further than how much permission they give you in fact yeah, everyone right. who comes to our churches is going going to give whatever level of permission they feel to mm -hmm. the church and to individuals in the church they may give permission to the pastor to speak more directly into their life mm -hmm. than someone else just because you have the title of being pastor or the mm. opposite. For example, when I came to, to the church and I didn't have a good image of pastors, I actually <laughs> was less open to receiving from the pastors because I was <laughs> very funny. skeptical of leadership. So right. I think permission is literally different for everyone. And it's this mm. invisible thing that you do not, you will never know until you test it. Actually, yeah. how much permission does this person give me? And so when someone mm. joins my connect group, I have no idea the level of permission that they're going to give me to speak into their life. And mm. I've got, let's say I've got a group of 10 guys. Well, this guy might be at a level eight in terms of how much permission he's giving me. This guy might be at a level three with how much he's mm. giving yeah. me. And obviously there needs to be some level or I can't lead a connect group if the person is just yeah. completely closed um, you'll end up feeling that and it's not going to work. Um, but there are levels to this. And I think as a leader, the only way I know is if I engage the person 
and yeah. see how they respond. Mm -hmm. And at at some point, I'm probably going to hit a bit of a wall there and I realize, mm -hmm. okay, that's the level that they're letting me speak into. Yeah. And then that that determines how far you can really take that person. And the good news is, is that they could change that level at the very next day. Um, yeah, and so absolutely. for me, when, when I came to Lifehouse, like I said, I was closed to leaders and pastors and very, very skeptical. But within six months, I was like super open. Mm. And I, I wanted them to speak into my life. I gave them permission, but I had to do that over time. And they had to initiate to test to see how open I was. So mm. I kind of moved from just the Hong Kong situation to a larger topic there of giving permission. That's great. But, mm -mm. but I, I, I think that, um, I think it's different for everyone. Yeah. And you, yeah, you got to test it. Absolutely. I think that's so true. I think, um, something I've been trying to even help with some of the leaders in Tokyo is understand that like everything that you just said, people will give their response according to how they feel about you. <laughs> yeah. So there is that element there. But I yeah. think it's important for us to also understand that if we have been given some sort of leadership, um, we are there to steward that leadership. But that also means that God is giving us a level of permission as well, saying yeah. you are now right. a leader. Mm -hmm. And in this, in this capacity that you are now in, you have a certain capacity now to speak into people's lives, to ask people's lives uh, questions. And then if they don't want to open up to that degree yet, fine, that's all good. Mm -hmm. But I think as leaders, it's still our responsibility to understand part of the job description is yeah. to engage. Yeah. And God has given us a permission that is above culture, it's above city, above personality to be able to speak into people's lives. So I think that's our responsibility as mm -hmm. leaders is to, mm -hmm. to take that step to at least try and engage and test the water. Because if you never test the water, like you said, you'll never mm -hmm. know how much or how far you could take a certain topic, a certain conversation. Now, the yep. conversation you brought up about a guy living in sin, obviously the connect group leader, that is something that you have to address. Mm -hmm. And if the person is unwilling to change after multiple attempts to get there, to, to get to that issue, the root of that issue, then it's probably a mismatch. That person's probably not ready to be under any form yeah. of leadership, therefore yeah. might not be ready to be in a connect group at all because in a connect group setting, it's got to, it's got to be a two way street, right? It's got to be this give and take like, yeah people coming into connect group understand I am coming under authority. Now they might not be thinking that like I'm going to come under this authority and this person's going to speak everything into my life. But mm -hmm. as leaders, we need to understand that that is how this works in God's kingdom, that people enter into the, the levels of authority that God has ordained over our life. And then we see kind of what happens along the way. But something I do with them, um, guys coming into my connect group is I will at the beginning, I will give my expectations. Uh, mine is an English speaking connect group. It, it's got people that are coming from different, maybe Christian backgrounds. So I need to kind of set the tone no matter what your background is. So that's why I have certain things. Uh, and one of them is we're going to talk about purity. I let them know from the first day before they even want to come and check out or visit my group, I'm like, we will be talking about purity. And when, when you're ready, I'm, I'm happy to have that chat with you. So I, I like, because I don't want to have to dig and dig and dig. I want to be upfront. Now, this is my personality and this is just, you know, what I do, yeah. but I want to be upfront that there is going to be a conversation about purity down the line. It's coming, letting you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Rather yeah. than having to just kind of like, dig and tread and ooh, where am I at with this person? Ooh, I don't know if I can speak. Ooh, we just met each other three weeks ago. Rather than all playing this little song and dance, I just want to be kind of upfront as possible. If people are stepping into 
a realm of authority that I have, then I want them to know, hey, this is what is going to happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, I think also it. the same for the opposite though. It's like, I don't want people to hear this and then be, oh, then I have authority to tell people what to do, who to marry, what jobs to take. Like, no, 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 no. We don't have authority to do that. That's not what I'm talking about. That's not what God has given us or ordained us to do. Yeah. God has given us the ability and authority to ask questions, not to give people, thus saith the Lord, you must marry this person, Yeah. but to ask questions good questions and engage with them and then point them to the word of God, point them to biblical principles and wisdom. Yeah. So anyways, those are some of my thoughts on the, the permission aspects. Do you find that's similar with, with people in Hong Kong too? Yeah. I, I like what you said about our job description because, <laughs> you know, we, we're talking about engagement and speaking into people's lives and that can be a sore topic for some people mm. if you've ever had any kind of controlling or manipulative leadership in your life. Right. Um, or, or or leaders who were just overly involved. Um, and yeah. I, I guess for anyone listening to this, at Lifehouse, um, we, we really believe and teach that as leaders, we're, we're not supposed to make decisions for people in areas mm. of you know, their relational lives, uh, like who they choose to marry, what kind of job uh, they should take, um, their mm. career choices, where they should live. Um, you know, th these are not in our job description. And so when mm. we talk about engagement, we are literally not talking. Uh, I mean, we can discuss, p people can come to us and, you know, talk about their careers and stuff like that, but we're not, it is out, it is not our place to go and give instruction on these things. Yet it is our place to teach good theology or it is our yeah. place to, yeah. um, to build a culture in the church. Um, mm. And so there's a whole lot of topics that are actually off, off limits for us in terms of giving instruction. Uh, so I yeah. think that's important for anyone to understand because we, we, we don't have authority over everything in people's lives uh, no. as leaders. And even as very, you know, senior pastors, like, or like high level pastors in our movement, we still don't have that. Like no one has that. Mm. And I remember actually, even in the early days coming to pastor Rod with big questions about my life. And I wanted, I, I almost wanted him to make the decision for me. Cause I thought my decision making mm. was basically bad. And uh, I'm like, <laughs> I'm pushing him for an answer and he's not giving me an answer because mm. he, well, he doesn't want responsibility for my decisions and yep. uh, it's, it's just not, it's not right. Um, mm. And so I think that's important that we frame that discussion. So we're engaging on certain things and we're not, we're not speaking into other things um, and mm. that, you know, so that depends on the job description. So we understand our roles mm. as leaders, as pastors, um, what we're going to speak into and what we're not going to speak into. Um, but where yeah. we do have, where God has given us authority to speak into, which is you're talking about that permission from God, which I like this, yeah. this, this concept of permission from the person and mm. permission from God. Obviously, mm. I have to do my responsibility that God has given me. And there's been times when, I just have given people truth from the Bible. Okay, this is my job to tell you what it says about mm. purity in the Bible. Yeah. Okay, you're you're you've, you're 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 living a lifestyle that is contrary to God's word, and it is costing you. And I need mm. to point that out and show you Scripture, and gracefully try to inspire you towards seeing things <laughs> from the Bible's yeah. point of view and making changes. But if you don't accept that, that's okay. If, if you have not given me that place to speak into your life and ultimately you've not given God the place to speak into your life through his word, then that's okay. But I have done my job. I, I had, you know, God gave me permission. I followed through. That's between you and him now. Yeah. Um, and so there's been times in leadership for sure where I think people won't listen 
They have not given us mm. permission. Um, but it was our job to deliver the message um, and yeah, not in right. a way that doesn't care about their feelings um, to do that. You know, truth and love is what we've been mm -hmm. talking about a lot this year. Um, yeah. yeah, so I, I think we've got to do our job. And then I have a there then I have a clear conscience. And even if the outcome is not what I wanted, obviously I wanted the person to change and move towards, you know, towards Jesus in that in that decision. But mm. even if they don't, I know I did what I could and I actually yeah. feel okay. And I'm not carrying this big disappointment. Oh, this person is, you know, sometimes as leaders, I think we can be very compassionate and too emotionally connected to their decisions. Mm, um, but if right. I've done what God said, then I feel I, I did my job and that's up to them. Mm. So I think that's important as well, like that compassion, because in church, in leadership, it's it's can be tricky sometimes because it's like you got to juggle a couple hats. Like I got my leader's hat on, but then mm. as you get to know them, they become friends. So then it's like, yeah. The, the line between leadership and friendship um, can, you know, get blurred very easily. And then if, yeah. if it's just a friend, then you're definitely more invested in their life. You're more invested in their decisions uh, because you care for them. You love them and you know this decision is going to lead to hurt and pain. So it's almost like I want to I wanna prevent them at all costs. Um, so I guess what are some things that you've learned along the way to not over engage we're talking about how to engage better mm. but then to over engage i think also is not great either where we're getting way too involved and things could very easily uh, fall apart when we get too involved and then they make bad decisions and they blame us something like that so what would your advice be richard if i'm getting too involved and i and i know it and i feel it but i care for this person so much and i don't know what to do Is this when you when you know you're over involved or you you're not aware mm. of it? Let's start with you're not aware, and then we could also discuss when you are aware. <laughs> yeah, I I think if you're not aware, you need to get some awareness. Okay, it, and so <laughs> like that that that's an annoying answer. <laughs> but that was what funny, I mean yeah. is that <laughs> that you need to be around other good leaders. And mm. you need to ask them, how do they, right. like, what do they engage on? What should I, if you, like, I think a lot of things in leadership, like I didn't know. And, you know, in the early days, and I'm just asking my leaders constantly, like, mm. is this a problem? Like, cause I've got that <laughs> huh thing, but I don't yeah. know whether I should engage it. So I'm going to go to my leader yeah. and just go, should, you know, should I talk about this? And sometimes my leader's response is absolutely. And then other mm. times it's, nah, don't touch it. Mm. And I think I've had so many conversations over the years with Pastor Rod and other great leaders in our movement that I learned the, the, the areas that I should push on and the areas that I should step away from. Mm. And I, I really great. think you can learn that. So uh, maybe yeah. I definitely think that there are some people that have intuitive gifts that sure. are very just naturally aware and sent more sensitive people. Um, hmm. I am not one of those people. I feel like <laughs> I've learned a lot of this through a lot of trial and error and a lot right. of conversations with leaders and a lot of like, like learning, listening to listening to teaching like this, essentially people hmm. talking about this case studies. I think all of that has helped me to, become a lot more accurate with um, mm. whether it is my zone to speak into or not. And obviously right. then I think as well, journaling and reading the Bible yeah. and, and seeing like seeing examples from scripture of what things, you know, Jesus spoke into or Paul mm. or, you know, what was he strong on and what did he not yeah. even mention? Um, I yeah. don't see anywhere where, you know, Paul is telling someone that they should marry a specific person. Yeah. He doesn't say that. Um, and no one 
in the Bible says that, you know, in the, in the new Testament. And, uh, so I think, I think we need to grow in awareness. It is something you can grow in. If you're bad at it, that's okay. But you have to study this and Mm. you have to try and you're going to make some mistakes. And if you're bad at this, you should engage your leaders more on this topic. Um, I think that's the first step is becoming aware. Um, Right. And then there's other times where you, you, yeah, yeah, you feel you, you do feel like, oh, I'm starting to like, you actually get some awareness and you start to realize I'm, I'm, I'm in too deep here. Yeah. Um, and that's when it's simple. You just, you just get out. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you, in, in fact, sometimes I've, I've had to say to people, look, at this point, the things you're asking me, uh, it, it's, it's not my place. And I really care right. about you guys. Uh, but you have to work this out. Mm. Um, or I really care about you and you, you need to work this out. And I, I can speak into this. I can, I can give this from scripture, but you got to work that out, mate. I, yeah, it's, it's, it, it wouldn't be good for me to be involved at that, at that level. So Mm. yeah, I think, I think you can even say that to people. I don't think you have to every time, but I think, right. That it makes sense. People get it. Yeah, I mean, I hope it, people get it because sometimes people could throw back at you, oh, you don't care about me. Mm. And it's like, actually, the opposite is true. I do care yeah. and I don't want to to give something that you're going to regret later. Mm. It's true. If you're not ready to take a, a certain truth and then we give them the truth and we try to force that truth upon them yeah, and then they, they do something silly, then then, you know, they could blame us very easily. But Pastor Rod has been talking a lot about uh, self-awareness is a key attribute for any leader. Yeah. And so me as 100%. well, like I'm a, I'm a kind of a more blunt type of personality. So developing self-awareness is something that I want to continue to to build in myself, in my leadership. Like I don't want to, I want to give the right response to the right person at the right time. And I think mm-hmm. it takes a certain level of self-awareness to be able to deliver that well. Um, and also love what you said about like, we're talking about how can I engage people better? I guess the immediate connotation is how can I engage people? So I'm a leader and I'm engaging someone that's under me, but I think that the opposite is just as true is engaging upwards, engaging Mm -hmm. leaders, asking questions upwards, not just downwards, because the question asking upwards will make us better at asking questions downwards if that makes Mm -hmm. sense. And yeah, yeah, I asked Pastor Rod quite frequently too, hey, what should I do with this? What should I say with this? This is what I thought. What do you think? Okay. And I'll sometimes tweak my own answer based on that. Like I don't need to say as much. Like I feel like I I tend to want to say a lot to describe, to, you know, prescribe, like whatever. Uh, But Pastor was like, you just need to say this. I'm like, but should I do? And he's like, yeah, no, just this is fine. Okay. <laughs> so that question asking upwards is constantly benefiting mm. me to be able to then ask good questions downwards as well. Yeah. Do you find the same is true uh with people that you are leading? Are they are they getting this? Are they understanding? Because you've lived that yourself, right? Asking questions upwards, engaging upwards, which has enabled yeah. you to engage better downwards. Do you feel like that is flowing yeah. from you as well to others? Like, do you feel like you're having good engagements with the team that you have? Yeah, I just uh, had a Zoom yesterday with one of our new Bible Connect group leaders um, who mm. he he had some kind of big questions on some theology stuff. And, uh, right. and, and I thought that was really healthy. He was kind of like, oh, I'm really sorry for like, you know, using your time. And I'm like, dude, this is, this is like, this is my job description. Like this is, this is why I want to be a pastor is I want to help people through this stuff and you need to get clear and confident Mm. so you can lead well. And I was just really stoked that he initiated for the first time at that level, like asking, can, can we get together to talk about this? I don't like, I'm not clear on this. Mm. and uh i i just wish people would do that more 
And yeah. um, you have to build that culture. I think as a leader, um, I mean, that is on me to build that culture. And mm. I, I think we've got a right. good culture of it in our church, but I just think mm. you can never have enough of that. I, I think yeah. I, hunger, hunger from leaders to grow. Yeah, I think I think you can, obviously that can be expressed in different ways. People can have a hunger and just go to YouTube and watch everything on YouTube and read every mm. book about a topic and never ask their actual pastor about this yeah. thing. <laughs> like that, that, that's not wise. Um, yeah. I've had to unlearn a lot of things over the years mm. um, because I was very hungry and I would eat everything. Mm. Um, and I've found that I've met a few personalities like this. They're consuming everything and they maybe even be listening from their pastor as well, but it's all equal. Mm. It's, it's, I'll just have everything. And the, you end up with confused people. Um, right. And that I, I know that really hurt my preaching for many years uh, was mm. listening to a very different style of preaching that was not connecting in Asia. Um, mm, interesting. And I had to change who, you know, who I was listening to. But I, I think that as like, we need to build a culture where like we should have hungry leaders who want to grow and they're going to grow by doing. And I talked about the trial and error, right? You learn through doing and through leading others. You're going to make some mistakes. You're going to learn from those mistakes. That's great. So that's kind of going down. Like you're leading people under you, right? You mm -hmm. learn that way, but you need to be leading up as well. You need to be learning mm. up through mm. engaging your leader, asking them questions. What should I do here? What do you think about this? What, like, and that's not wasting their time. Um, yeah. That's that's like, I mean, Pastor Rod is just doing that constantly. Yeah, like, <laughs> like all the time. Um, mm. and he's never getting sick of those questions. Uh, and I and oh, I just realized it. over the years how many role plays he's done with me. Like mm. over the phone, I've been in Hong Kong now 13 years right. and I'll bring, I'll, I'll bring up a topic like this is happening. What do you think? And then he'll, he'll share his thoughts and kind of, he, do, he doesn't say let's do a role play. Like it's not like that, but no. he's, <laughs> he's basically voicing out a conversation that, that he'd have with someone. And mm. I don't have to do that word for word, but it's, it's just, it's more tools in my, mm. you know, in my belt to be able to go and have these conversations with people. And I think if you're not engaging yeah. your leaders, you are seriously doing yourself a disservice. If you're just mm. looking at stuff online, uh, you're probably going to get some stuff that's not relevant and it'll actually, <clears throat> it'll actually set you back. So mm. I'm not saying don't look at stuff online, but that's one thing we've yep. been talking about is like what resource what extra resource is out there that's actually helpful to our context? Because not everything mm. is helpful and it may be yeah. helpful to another context. So we're not poo-pooing it, but yeah, um, it, what is helpful to our context? And there's some stuff like, let's say John Maxwell, his stuff, of course, his resource really works. It's very yeah. universal. And then there's other stuff that's very America specific, Australia specific culturally mm. not so relevant um and actually can can actually lead you in the opposite direction so i think as a as a person who's growing and hungry we need to also have wisdom as to what we're listening to mm. kind of got yeah. off topic there a little bit but no that's good because i think uh, to bring it back on topic uh -huh, talking you. about like the <laughs> the authority <laughs> that we are given authority and submission go hand in hand. And I think if you are, as long as you're like submitted to the local church and to what the local church believes, like you could, you could listen to these other things, but you could have balance with what, whatever yeah. you hear. Like I could, I could go on YouTube and type in tithing and I would have 20 videos come up that's that argue against tithing. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but like, I believe in tithing. Our church believes in tithing. We back it up with the scriptures. Uh, we back it up with what we believe. And that's just something that like, I've 
you know, as a younger leader, I just had to lock it in my heart. Like this is something I believe, something our church believes. Other people yep. can disagree and they disagree. And it's okay to be disagreeing on that because this is what we believe. Yep. So understanding that there's going to be other voices, but then also having like my heart is submitted to the voice of this church, to the the teaching of this church. I'm here. I'm like I'm building this. Like I'm gonna mm-hmm. use the the tools and the materials to build this church and this house, rather than trying to yep. like find some fancy materials from a different house. Yeah. So I think that ties back into like the self awareness as well. I think yep. people who are submitted are all the more self aware. Um, and the story of the Roman centurion in the Bible, right? He asked Jesus to heal his servant and Jesus, and he's just like, just say the word because I'm under authority. I understand authority. And Jesus said, no one in this area has as much faith as this man. Mm -hmm. So I do think there's something intrinsically connected about authority and understanding being submitted to leadership as well. And I think that ultimately helps with engagement. Yeah. Yeah. And how, like understanding how the local church works. Like, so if you're, if you're not a lifehouse person and you're listening to this podcast, I hope we mm. hope we are reaching other people and helping other leaders. But obviously, yeah. anything that me or Monty says uh, is going to be secondary to what your local church is teaching. Hundred um, percent. That that your local church needs to have that authority to be able to speak into, you know, whatever. Uh, so we, uh, you know, if you're not from Lifehouse and you're in another great church, hopefully we can supplement, you know, whatever, mm. whatever they're teaching and, and like, or, or man, no, not supplement. I think compliment is the right word is mm, yep. maybe we can add word. some value in some area where there might be a gap in your understanding of something. And, but if mm. we said anything that's in, that's literally contrary to what your pastors are teaching you you kind of need to ignore what we're saying. Um, sure. <laughs> and if you if you think your church is just wrong, then maybe you got to look at what church you're going to. Like, Oof. so I'm not just saying we're blindly following our local church leaders. Yeah, it's good. Because um, they're not perfect either. But at the same time, if, if we're in a church, like we come under their authority. We're, we're choosing to plant ourselves mm. under their spiritual leadership and authority. So that has to take precedent. And if you're a Lifehouse person, come under the come under the teaching of Lifehouse, and then mm. complement that with other great resources that we have. Like we're so blessed, especially in the English speaking world, there is so much oh, yeah. great content out there. But sometimes you might have to um, overlook some of it or portions mm. of it uh, because the it's the context is different. Than your local church. Yeah, that's so good. So I think we might need to wrap it up. But I guess a few takeaways from this conversation of how can I engage better. uh, One would be, yeah, be submitted to a good local church and understand the authority that uh, is over you and that God has also maybe given to you if you are a leader. Um, And then I think another great takeaway is you got to just do it. You just yeah. got to do it. You got to, it just boils down to this. You got to, you have to engage. You, it's one thing to learn and, and, and hear and all that good stuff, but I think you mm-hmm. just got to simply do it. And then and, another and one is does, maybe just being, oh yeah, go on. It, well, I was just going to say, and it does feel awkward. Like there's yeah. a comfort zone <laughs> thing here. You're going to be out of your comfort zone. So if you get that feeling, that's fine. Mm. Just recognize, yeah. oh, this is that feeling. I'm going to ignore that feeling <laughs> and I'm going to yeah. engage because I want to see fruit from my leadership. Yeah, yeah that's great. And I guess the, the final one is uh, not just be concerned about engaging maybe downwards, but engage upwards. If, if you are listening to this yeah. and you are a leader or you want to be a leader, I think mm-hmm. the next best step you could take is talk to whoever is your leader. Ask them questions. Ask, how can I help? What can I do? How can mm-hmm. I do more or be more involved? And I think that engagement upwards will ultimately benefit the engagement downwards. Any other last thoughts or comments from you, Richard? I just think the more engagement, the more fruit. 
So if you want mm. more fruit in your life, get good at this stuff. Yeah. And the outcome is you'll see more changed lives around you because the truth in love is a powerful thing. Mm. Fantastic. Well, I want to yep. thank you all for joining us for another great episode of The Rodcast. Tune in next time and we'll see you then. Bye. See ya. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us today. And if you enjoyed today's episode, why don't you subscribe on whatever platform you are listening to this and we'll see you next time.